Hello and Fulbrus, and this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries coming from our neighbor Saturn, and to be more specific, the rings of Saturn, but also one of its most famous moons. The moon that you see right here, that I usually call Enceladus, but some people seem to pronounce it very differently, especially when they're hungry and they want some enchiladas, like I would actually like some right now. Anyway, moving on. So this moon is very famous for one simple reason, the discovery from the Cassini probe approximately a decade ago which can be easily seen in this image right here. And this was a really big discovery, because once again it suggested that there is some kind of a liquid water present inside this object. Very likely a large subsurface ocean that once in a while seems to escape through various stripes visible on the surface of this beautiful moon. And these unusual tiger stripes have only recently been potentially explained. These unusual cracks, especially the ones that seem to be parallel with a relatively equal distance between them, seem to be the result of the moon's eccentric orbit, which creates a very specific thermal stress, fracturing the ice shell, forming these unique patterns. This was discussed in one of the videos you can find in the description in a little bit more detail. And so because in certain regions around the surface, the ice is much thinner, mostly because of this cracked ice resulting from tidal interactions, in certain regions, the pressure from the ocean below creates enough stress to suddenly erupt from within. And so as this pressure builds up, it eventually creates various pathways for liquid water to reach the surface that can actually be as far as 20 to 30 kilometers away from the ocean itself. In essence, creating very unique three-dimensional cracks going all the way down to the ocean itself. But it's really what happens afterwards and how these emissions are created that sort of is surprising. As a matter of fact, the recent observations from the James Webb created quite a lot of buzz because of these eruptions. The image was only taken a few days ago, but in essence it shows us a plume that's approximately 10,000 kilometers in length. And this is the largest plume that we've ever seen coming from this moon. With the actual physical observations suggesting that it's mostly made out of water. Actually, it seems to be just water. There doesn't seem to be any carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, methane, or any carbon molecules which the scientists expected to see. But I guess more intriguingly, it's really the size of this particular emission that seems to be surprising. It's at least 40 times bigger than the moon itself. This moon is only 500 kilometers across, with the overall emission rate being approximately 300 liters per second. And though this is surprising and definitely not something we've seen before, there have been discoveries of previous massive eruptions that just did not make sense otherwise. The scientists previously discovered these unusual pit chains that are actually visible in other locations in the solar system that seem to indicate these massive eruptions that happened sometimes in the past and were definitely larger than average eruptions we've seen from this object. Suggesting that sometimes these eruptions are really huge. But the question is what exactly is causing them? So unlike for example a typical volcano or similar volcanoes on objects like Io, the moon of Jupiter, things seem to work a little bit differently here. It's actually not really correct to call these volcanoes at all. For example, here on Io, the outgassing that's mostly sulfur dioxide creates a lot of flow on the surface. On the other hand, we have what's known as a cryovolcano, such as the ones on Titan, the biggest of Saturn's moons, where all sorts of ices, including water, essentially act in a very similar way to a typical volcano, erupting and creating a flow on the surface. But this doesn't seem to happen around Enceladus, especially because we don't really observe any flow at all. So in essence, these are closer to geysers or even just a unique object altogether. And that's what some of the recent studies that you can find in the description kind of propose. They basically explain this as not really an eruption as much as just evaporation. To be more exact, it's decompression boiling, which results from liquid water suddenly reaching vacuum and basically extremely cold conditions and violently evaporating all at once, in the process also creating huge amounts of pressure. But fundamentally also different from cryovolcanoes on objects like, for example, Europa, the moon of Jupiter. Here the scientists believe that these are actual volcanoes with pressurized liquid escaping and depositing on the surface. But the mechanism around Enceladus seems to be fundamentally different. So first of all, it all starts with these cracks, and specifically in the location where the cracks form a kind of a perfect pathway for the water from within to escape, and especially this location right here that seems to have these unusual cracks, 35 kilometers apart, 130 kilometers long, that create a sort of a mesh responsible for most of these eruptions on Enceladus, which though we cannot explain right now, is very likely explainable through some kind of a very specific three-dimensional structure that all of this forms underneath the ice. 
And so violin sublimation or violin boiling is basically what's happening on the surface here. And because these are also very unique formations not seen anywhere else in the solar system, it makes this moon particularly special. And so these recent discoveries from the James Webb and the previous discoveries of unusual features on the surface definitely suggest that once in a while eruptions can be very active and extremely explosive. Kind of like a very powerful blizzard that suddenly explodes from the surface and starts to throw off all of this really really fast moving ice all at once. With these ice particles moving really far away from the moon and eventually forming one of the rings of Saturn. Specifically the Saturn's E-ring. And the analysis from the James Webb determined that approximately 30% of water seems to be deposited inside the ring with the other 70% escaping to the rest of the system. Which actually really intriguing because it means that this particular ring of Saturn is created as a result of gravitational forces from Saturn squeezing the moon so much that it starts to spew out all of the water from within it. Quite an intriguing way to create a ring. And speaking of rings, we do have some discoveries in regards to these unusual formations here as well. We actually talked about some discoveries in one of the previous videos you can find in the description, including the discovery that the rings here seem to be relatively young, but the recent discoveries about the rings go a little bit further. And it's connected to this unusual observation from the Saturn's rings that was detected a few decades ago. Unusual dark patches, or unusual spokes as they're also known, that seem to be very seasonal and seem to appear and disappear whenever Saturn goes through its unusual phases or its unusual seasons. And that's because just like Earth, Saturn's rotation is a little bit tilted, so it also has four seasons. But each season here lasts approximately seven years. And the intriguing part here is of course not the seasons on Saturn, but the seasons inside the rings. The, I guess, spoke seasons as they're also known. These unusual formations disappear when it's near summer or winter solstice and then reappear again during fall or during spring. As a matter of fact, it's going to have its fall equinox around May 6th of 2025. And that's when the scientists expect these particular spokes to be increasingly prominent and much easier visible than before. The problem is that there's really no exact explanation for what causes these formations and for why they happen only sometimes but not other times. And so the current explanation seems to rely on the combination of sunlight and specifically charged particles from the sun and the magnetic field. And the reason the scientists believe it's magnetic in nature and not really related to the planet or the gravity from the moons is because their rotation rate doesn't match up with the rotation of the rings, as if something else was controlling them. And that something else is most likely the magnetic field. And so here the scientists believe that once in a while certain icy particles can become charged as well and they actually become trapped and sometimes levitate right above the rest of icy particles inside the rings. And depending on your perspective, sometimes they appear darker, sometimes they appear brighter. And so these strange spokes are most likely the result of this very strange magnetic interaction between Saturn, the Sun, and the icy particles inside the rings. Although honestly, it's still a bit of a mystery and still does not have a very good explanation. Here is the best Hubble observation we have so far, showing how these spokes change over time. And so hopefully with the James Webb observations, we might be able to answer what's happening here. For now, it's still a bit of a mystery. But what's not a mystery is how the rings also seem to affect the atmosphere of Saturn. Turns out that the unusual observations of excess heat in the upper atmosphere seem to be the result of the interaction with the rings. The particles from the rings, as they fall into the atmosphere, seem to turn certain regions much hotter. And very likely through some kind of a chemical reaction we still don't really understand. And so as the particles from the rings slowly escape and become part of the Saturn's atmosphere, they also seem to affect the chemical composition in the atmosphere and create heat. In the process also changing the overall composition. And that's independent of what's known as the ring rain we've discussed in a previous video, where we know that the rings also create a kind of a rain on the surface. So apart from the rain, there also seems to be some kind of a chemical reaction that produces excess heat visible from far away. And then when it comes to the ring rain, we know this is something that's also magnetic in nature and is basically the result of the solar bombardment and the magnetic lines from Saturn depositing the ring particles in a certain way. When it comes to this observation, these collisions and these reactions and the excess heat seems to be entirely chemical in nature. And definitely not something the scientists expected to find up until relatively recently. And so once again Saturn surprises us even more and presents even more evidence about how these rings seem to affect the planet in ways nobody expected. But if you'd like to learn about previous discoveries or the other effects we've discussed recently, check out the video in the description. Anyway, great observations from the James Webb 
and even more mysteries solved to some extent. But I'm sure we'll be talking more about Saturn in the next few months as the scientists discover even more. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.